Hello, brothers and sisters. God bless. Hope your night or day is going good. Everything's going well with you. I wanted to talk about the good news and hope to encourage somebody with the good news, which is the gospel. The good news is always good. If you're a believer, it's always good, no matter what. Throughout your life, every second of your life, this news is always good for you. It's called the good news. It's never bad news. If you're a believer, it's never the bad news. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's the good news. And you can go through all kinds of worldly troubling circumstances. You could even be blowing it yourself every single day of your life. You notice that, well, before the eyes of God, I don't measure up. If I look at his holy law and I look at myself, I'm a complete failure. I'm a complete and utter failure before God. And I see that there's, there's no righteousness in me. And I just feel like I can't have any favor. Well, that's the good thing about the good news is that we have favor and we have righteousness and so much more with God through Jesus Christ. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. So in the gospel, the good news, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, that we are made righteous by faith. You see that in the book of Romans, it says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, in Christ Jesus upon all those who believe and there is no difference so even the righteousness of God is this is not just any righteousness that we get but the righteousness of God it's not a righteousness of our own it's the righteousness of God even the righteousness righteousness of God which is by faith in Christ Jesus upon all those who believe and there is no difference that there's no difference that that they all have equally and collectively have the righteousness of Jesus Christ this is such good news that the scripture tells us that God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and it's by faith in Christ Jesus and not our performance or our obedience. It's simply a gift that God gives us on the basis of faith. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, he said, May I be found in him having a righteousness not of my own, which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith. In Christ Jesus, even the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. So you can see here, Paul says it's not a righteousness of his own, and it's not through the law, it's not through his performance and his obedience, but it's through the obedience of Christ that he is made righteous. See that in the scripture too. It says, just as through one man's disobedience many were made sinners, even so through the one man's obedience many are made righteous. So it's through the one man's obedience that we're made righteous. It's not through our collective efforts. It's not what we do. But we collectively and equally have the righteousness of Christ Jesus on the basis of faith. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus upon all those who believe, and there is no difference. We collectively and equally have the righteousness of Christ Jesus, and it's a gift of God. It's not something that we could ever earn. It's something that we get when we put our faith in Christ Jesus. Consider this verse here in Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through the one man, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in this life through the one man, Jesus Christ? So we receive the gift of righteousness. Righteousness is a gift. It's not something that we have to work for or earn. If we ever had to work for it, it would cease being a gift. But the Bible calls it a gift. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in this life? A few chapters later, it says the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. That when God gives you this gift on the basis of faith, he never takes it away. And so we get righteousness by faith. We don't ever have to work for it. It's a free gift. Romans chapter 4 verse 5 says to the one who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. So to the one who doesn't work, so you don't have to work to become righteous. To the one who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, believes on him, that's Jesus, who justifies the ungodly, that's a non-guilty verdict. His faith is accredited to righteousness. So isn't that good news? If you ever seem to look at yourself and say, well, in and of my own standing, I'm ungodly, I'm not righteous. Well, that would be the bad news. But the good news is that in the eyes of God through Jesus Christ, by having faith in him, you're made perfectly righteous forever in the sight of God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 says, By one offering he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. 
by one single offering, what Jesus did on the cross. He has perfected us forever. He has made us perfectly righteous before God the Father, before himself. When Paul was talking about grace, he said, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died needlessly. So righteousness doesn't come through the law. Law, it comes, you see, it says, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died needlessly. Remember, when he died, he perfected us forever. By one offering, he has perfected us forever, those who are sanctified. By one offering, by one single offering, what Jesus did on the cross, he has perfected us, made us righteous and right in the sight of God forever. So I'm just, just touching on the good news here. It, it keeps going and going, and the more you learn about the good news, the more it just it appears to get better and better as we grow in the grace and knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ. We just understand what God has done for us, that he that did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not freely with him give us all things? That everything that pertains to Christ and his life and who he is is now imputed and imparted to you. That if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. So if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Your position as a sinner has passed away. Your sins have been removed as far as the east is to the west. And now you have the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, it says, By his own doing you are in Christ Jesus, who became from us from God righteousness, sanctification, redemption, and wisdom, so that just as it is written, let him boast, boast in the Lord. That when you're placed in Christ, you become that new creation. You, you take on a new identity, and your old identity is removed as far as the east is to the west. And now you have a righteousness, and it's not of your own, which comes through the law or performance, but on the basis of faith. That God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And just as Jesus didn't do one sinful action to become sin for us, we didn't do one single thing to become righteous. It was a divine transaction. The love of God demonstrated for the one who puts their faith in him. The sinner, the ungodly person who places their faith in him is made perfectly righteous in the sight of God. So this is good news because if you ever think, well, and of my own standing, I'm ungodly or, or I'm unrighteous. Well, that's exactly what the law would reveal, that you're ungodly and unrighteous. But the purpose of the law is then to lead you to faith in Christ. And then once you've been justified by faith, you're no longer under the law. You're no longer under the thing that would condemn you or show you that you're guilty. Because now you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The scripture says the law was a schoolmaster to lead us to faith in Christ. But once we've been justified by faith, we're no longer under the schoolmaster. The schoolmaster is a reference to the law, and it's saying that once you've been justified by faith, you have a non-guilty verdict. You're no longer under the schoolmaster, the thing that would show that you're guilty, the thing that would make you feel like you're not making the standard, that you're not finding favor in the eyes of God. A lot of people think if they work, they will find favor in the eyes of God. But Romans chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, it says to the one who works, it's not counted as favor, but as wages do. That is, they owe something. If they think that they're going to gain righteousness or favor under the law, they don't find favor. They don't find righteousness. They find wages due under the law because only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. And it shows that a person is guilty and that they're unrighteous and they have a debt that needs to be paid. If Christ hasn't paid their debt, then, they ha then they'll have to pay the debt. To the one who works, it's not counted as favor, but as wages do. But to the one who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. Which is another great part of the good news is that we're justified. It's not that we're just made righteous. God makes us righteous. He takes away our sins as far as the east is to the west. But then he justifies us. I already gave a few of those uh, verses to the one who does not work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly that that's a non-guilty verdict the law was a schoolmaster to lead us to faith in christ but once you've been justified by faith you're no longer under the schoolmaster justified past tense it's as though judgment day has already come and you received a non-guilty verdict Jesus said it this way, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my words and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life, not might have, not could have, not possibly have, but has everlasting life.
they shall not come into the judgment that pass from death to life. Jesus says they shall not come into the judgment. It's as though the judgment day has already happened. They have passed from death to life. They have passed into the life of Christ. And that life has now become their life. As Colossians says, you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. And when Christ, who is our life, appears, we shall appear with him in glory. So the scripture tells us that Christ is our very life. And that's got to be some of the best news that I've ever heard. I've always thought if I could just live the perfect life before God the Father, if I could just live the perfect life and and everything I did was pleasing to him. Well, we are pleasing to him because the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. So our faith is what's pleasing to God. And the scripture tells us that we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. That our faith in Christ Jesus, we get justified by faith in Christ Jesus apart from the works of the law, apart from performance, apart from obedience. And that faith in Christ Jesus is pleasing to God. What's not pleasing to God is going back to the law and trying to justify yourself under it. You won't find favor there. To the one who works, it's not counted as favor, but as wages do. Remember, by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. Only by the law comes the knowledge of guilt and condemnation. But we receive that justified verdict. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace toward God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see all these verse about, verses about being justified, they're past tense. Therefore, having been justified by faith, non-guilty verdict, we have peace toward God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So this isn't a temporal peace. This isn't a peace as the world gives. World, The world gives temporal enjoyments, temporal things that are just temporal and they fade away and they eventually are gone. But what Jesus gives is not as the world gives does he give to us. And he says, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. It's such good news that you can always have a peace that's everlasting, that never fails, no matter what the worldly circumstance that you're going through, and that you don't ever have to be troubled and you don't have to be afraid, according to Jesus. Jesus said, in me you'll have peace, in the world you'll have trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So, in me you'll have peace, Jesus said. In him you're going to have this peace that's everlasting, it's eternal. It's not as the world gives, does he give to you. You don't have to let your hearts be troubled. You don't have to let them be afraid, no matter what the worldly circumstance. What I often find when I'm going through difficult stuff, and when I see my brothers and sisters, sisters in Christ going through difficult things, that usually what the heart of their pain and their worry and their fear is that God doesn't love them or care anymore, or that they've lost favor or maybe not righteous in his sight. And so their fear of that and you know, they're letting their hearts be troubled, they're letting them be afraid because of the worldly circumstance. And they think that, you know, if God, you know, loved me and cared for me and I still had that favor and I was still righteous, even though I was going through this worldly circumstance, things wouldn't seem so bad. So we can take heart because Jesus tells us in him we'll have peace in the world. We're going to have trouble, but be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. The Bible tells us that whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And our faith is in Christ Jesus. And not only are we victorious through him, but we're more than conquerors. No matter what the circumstance in life, you're more than a conqueror. No matter the circumstance. Um, the Bible says we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, for I am persuaded that neither life nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So nothing can separate us from the love of God, and we're more than conquerors through this love that God has for us. And you see that it says nothing in life, nothing in death, no nothing present, nothing to come nor height, nor depth of, of what we go through. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is another part of the good news is the love of God. You see, we went through the righteousness. We went through verses about being justified, verses about having peace with God. Now we talk about the love of God is that he loves us perfectly and everlastingly. Nothing can separate us from the love of God.
And as I said before, with my own personal fears and the fears that I see in my brothers and sisters in Christ when they're going through difficult circumstances, is that they're afraid most of all of being separated from the love of God. If they know that they're not separated from the love of God, the difficult circumstances that they're going through can seem less burdensome. They can still be painful and grievous, but if you know that God loves you perfectly and everlastingly, you know that things will turn out okay because God is working all things according to the counsel of his will, even the good and the bad. And that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purposes. And so it doesn't tell us in the Bible that things will always be good. Things There will be difficult and burdensome times. But we always have good news with God, and it's through Christ Jesus. It's always good news that nothing can separate us from the love of God, that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So these verses about love in the Bible are so great. It, it's a part of the good news to know how much God loves us. God demonstrates his own love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is a perfect, everlasting, unceasing love that God has for those who place their faith in Christ Jesus. The scripture tells us that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love, speaking about God's love that we're rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what's the height, the depth, the length, the width, and to know the love of God which surpasses all understanding and wisdom and that you may be filled with the fullness of God. So to be filled with the fullness of God is to meditate on the love of God that he has for us, the height, the depth, the unmeasurable expanse of God's love that he has for us. You see it for, in First John, it says, By this love is perfected with us, that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, that as he is, so we are in this world. See, this, by, this love is perfected with us, that it's at its maximum greatness. It's at its pinnacle of what it can be, and nothing can be added to to make it better. By this love is perfected with us, that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, that as he is, so we are in this world. How can we have confidence on the day of judgment? Because as he is, as Christ is, he's holy and righteous, so we are in this world. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 says, By his will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. So you can see how many times the Bible says we've been made holy once through the offering of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it was once and for all. It was for all time that we've been made holy. So as he is, so we are in this world. That's why we'll have confidence in the day of judgment by this love is perfected with us that we may have confidence on the day of judgment that as he is so we are in this world and you can see in second uh, corinthians where it says god made him who knew no sin to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god in him and that's right now in this world we are the righteousness of god in christ jesus that as he is so we are in this world and you can see that god has perfected his love with us in this way by demonstrating that not only did he give us son's blood to wash away our sins, but he actually gave us the, his righteousness as well. That he that did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not freely with him give us all things? So you can see how First John describes this perfect love. By this love is perfected with us. He says it in another verse. He says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears has not been made perfect in love. So he says there's no fear in love. How much fear is in love? Remember, Jesus told us not to let our hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Why? Because he loves us so perfectly. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears has not been made perfect in love. So when you realize that you're still afraid of God, you know, you're still fearful of him, well, you haven't been made perfect in the knowledge of God's love. You haven't been filled with the fullness of God yet. And you're on your way. You know, this is this is how it happens. God uh, changes our mind through the scriptures. He renews our mind that we understand his mind and that we submit to what he says about us. You see, in the scripture, it says what God has called clean, let no man call unclean. So when Jesus has made us perfectly holy and perfectly righteous, let, let us not call him a liar. Let's <laughs> let us not call ourselves unclean before him. He's made us perfectly clean and he's made us perfectly clean forever. You remember in the scripture, it says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as red as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be as red like crimson, they shall be like wool. 
And that's what Jesus has done for us. He not only removed our sins, but then he gave us the white covering of his righteousness and made us perfectly righteous before God the Father, before himself. We're perfectly at peace with God. We're perfectly justified. We're perfectly loved. Jesus said it this way, Father, I and them, you and me, that they may be perfected in unity, and that the world may know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. So according to Jesus, we're loved even as he is loved. That's a perfect love. Everything that pertains to Jesus pertains to you. It's hard for you to believe. It's hard for me to believe. But this is what the Bible says, and we are to renew our mind to what the Scripture says, that we're loved even as the Son is loved. Father, I and them, you and me, that they may be perfected in unity, and that the world may know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. So we're loved with an unmeasurable, undying, perfect love. We couldn't be loved any more perfectly. And it's not because we are so good and we are so lovable. It's because God is so good and he is so loving. And he has demonstrated his love towards us in particular ways and given us this good news. You can see the points that we covered over the good news so far is that we're perfectly righteous, that we're perfectly loved, that we have a perfect peace with God. Scripture says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called into peace in one, into one body and be thankful. So let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let it have command and authority and power over your hearts by which you were called into one body and be thankful. We were all called equally and collectively to have this peace together, knowing that we collectively and equally have the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus upon all those who believe, and there is no difference. We collectively and equally have the righteousness of Christ, and we can collectively and equally have the peace that comes along with that knowledge that we have been made right with God forever by that one offering he has perfected forever, those who are sanctified. So we talked about how we're perfectly justified, how we have perfect peace with God, how we're perfectly loved, how we're perfectly righteous before him. And the other part is that we have eternal life. You know, of course, all this would not mean a whole lot if we didn't have eternal life, would it? But this all comes along with the eternal life that Christ gives us. He says in John chapter 6, verse 47, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me has everlasting life. Not maybe, not might be, not could be. But truly, truly, he gives this imperative of truth that whoever believes has everlasting life. So that's another great part of the good news. It's not that we maybe have eternal life or might be have eternal life or could have eternal life. We'll find out when we get there if we have eternal life. But truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me has everlasting life. You see this in First John. It says, these things I write to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Not hope or wish or think, or maybe it's a possibility, but these things are right to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Now that's good news because you, if you can know that you have eternal life and you can know it right now on this side of heaven, that's good news. And it's an everlasting eternal life. It never goes away. It never ceases. And you get it the moment you believe. Notice what Jesus says. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me has everlasting life. You get eternal life when you believe, not when you die. So this is good news that God loves us so perfectly. He's made us perfectly righteous. He gives us his perfect peace. He perfectly justifies us and he gives us eternal life. So I hope this blesses someone. I hope this encourages someone. This is, again, I feel like just a part of the good news. The good news is so great. It's so awesome that you just can spend your life digging up hidden trees gems and treasures in the word of God and finding out what Jesus has done for us through the cross. And Paul said, may I never boast except in the cross of Christ through which is the world has been crucified to me and I of the world. So God bless you guys. Peace to you. Take care and I hope your night or day is going good. God bless.